And before you settle down to listen, make a phone call. Let your friends and your neighbors know that they can hear the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that which the world needs, that which the black man most certainly needs. That truth that is declared will make us free. We need to be free, free indeed. So we ask you to do this, brothers and sisters, and those that you call will thank you, as I'm sure you will be very happy to know that you are instrumental in bringing them the message of truth. My beloved brothers and sisters, we would like for you to meet and greet a very capable brother, a helper of our beloved brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is the national representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his assistant, brother that you've heard on the airwaves, a very, very fine young man and an example for the black man to follow. But we need many examples, and this is one. Brothers and sisters, let us meet and greet Minister Louis Farrakhan's assistant, our beloved brother, Minister Larry Foix. Let us greet him with a warm round of applause, and I greet you. as alaikum. Thank you. In the name of Allah, came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom all praise is due forever and ever. And we thank Allah for blessing us with a divine leader, teacher, and guide, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Brothers and sisters of Muhammad's temple, I'd like to greet you in the nation's greeting of Salaam Alaikum. Uh, thank you for being with us and our brothers and sisters in the radio audience. And I hope you will take that good suggestion that my brother and minister Henry has offered to you to call someone and tell them to tune in to this program this afternoon. But this afternoon we have back with us our beloved brother minister Louis Farrakhan. And I would like to say that he has returned from a speaking engagement on the West Coast, uh, where the city of Berkeley and Oakland, the mayors of those two cities, uh, gave a day of honor to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And throughout America today, we find city after city. Uh, this coming week, starting tomorrow in the city of Newark, it will be the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's Appreciation Week. The city of Nashville has opened up for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Appreciation Day any day that the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad chooses. But this is going on one city after another. You read in the latest edition of Muhammad Speaks, the city of Atlanta, Georgia. You know that there's other cities throughout the country, the city of uh, Los Angeles, California, uh, the city of San Francisco, and it's throughout the country you see cities now uh, honoring the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the man himself, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is a change. And though many black people throughout America know Muhammad, but they have never really grown to appreciate the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is a man who has been working throughout America now going into 44 years. And his work is there now for the world to look at. And as men begin to look at his work, they begin to appreciate the good work that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is doing among black people. So we thank Allah and his messenger, firstly, for the appreciation of Muhammad that is being shown throughout the country. And we thank those who helped the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because he's a man that people knew of, but people didn't appreciate until his ministers began to talk on his work. The messenger himself has poured his oil, as I heard one of his ministers say very beautifully yesterday, has poured oil into the lamp of his ministers. And his ministers have gone throughout the wilderness to hold up that lamp that's a light that leads the way to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So Brother Minister Farrakhan was on the West Coast and he spoke there in Oakland and many other cities throughout America as the cities open up to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they invite the ministers of Muhammad to come in to hold up the lamp of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so those black people who are in darkness can see the great light from the messenger shining forth throughout America and even today throughout the world. So there's a period now for black people to grow into an understanding of the messenger. You know, I heard Minister Farrakhan teaching at Morgan State. I was listening to a tape that he made there, and he talked about your knowledge of the messenger and what you know of the messenger. And he said that you grow, as you learn more about him, you grow into a greater knowledge of him and you begin to appreciate the man even more. So this afternoon, my brothers and sisters in New York in the metropolitan area, who usually tune into this radio program, there are many things that you have gained from the teachings of the messenger coming from his minister. There are many afternoons that you have tuned in and the minister would be talking on a subject that would go right into a problem that you may have at home. 
There are many things that you have gained from the messenger that makes you to appreciate the messenger today even more. But you must look at those brothers who struggle in the wilderness of North America to carry his light, knowing that his light represents salvation to the black man and black woman of America. Minister Farrakhan, as the, one of his brother ministers was saying yesterday, that the messenger has poured oil into his lamp so that he could hold that lamp up, not that, so that you could see him, but so that you could see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He's holding that lamp up because he's saying, here's a man. If you think that wisdom is coming out of my mouth, well, here's the man who unloosened the knot in my tongue and made me to speak wisdom. Here's the man that represents salvation for black America. I love you as a brother, but I want you to see this man. So I'm working as hard as I can, pouring out my all in all, that black America now would look and see the man that represents their salvation. So listen to Minister Farrakhan this afternoon. Listen, I know you may be burdened with problems. I know that there may be something in your mind that is not straight. There may be confusion here. You may have a domestic problem. You may have a drug problem. You may have a problem with education. You may have a problem with your children. But listen to what comes to you from this minister this afternoon from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I guarantee you that there will be a word in his mouth that will help you regardless of what your problem may be. So Minister Farrakhan is with us this afternoon. We're happy to have him back over the airways and in the temple. You know, the city is waiting to hear him. I know my brothers who are upstate in the prisons. You haven't heard the minister in a few weeks. I know our brothers and sisters who may be confined to the hospital or you may be confined to your home. But listen this afternoon and give a call to one of your brothers or sisters who you know may be suffering spiritually or physically and tell them to tune in to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's national representative, Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. So he's here. Let's bring him on. Let's greet our beloved Brother Minister Farrakhan. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, who came in the divine person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom all praise is due the Lord of the world. We thank Allah for blessing us with our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the most honorable, Elijah Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, again we are thankful to Almighty God Allah for this great opportunity to be able to stand before you and to represent to you the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the man, Elijah Muhammad. To give you the message of Muhammad without giving you an understanding of the man, Muhammad, is to give you a lock without a key. And a man who gives you a lock and gives you not the key has given you nothing. people believe that they can take the wonderful message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and use it for their personal gain without proper recognition of the source of that divine message. This is not so. For while you may gain something for a while, the end result will never be too pleasing to you who seek to use the message of God without giving the messenger of God his proper due. It is highly improper for us to discuss his message and not discuss him. Because when Almighty God Allah chooses a man to deliver a message, he never makes a mistake in where he places his message. He chooses the right man at the right time. And he chooses that particular man for a reason. What is God's reasoning? Whenever it is time for him to deliver a message, to the people 
He has an aim and a purpose for that people. That messenger whom he chooses must be a man whose heart, whose mind, whose soul, whose desires are in accord with God's aim and purpose for that people even though he may not know God's aim and purpose for that people. If we study Almighty God Allah's selection of prophets, he is careful in his selection. He doesn't select men of renown. He does not select men highly learned of their day as a general rule. He does not select men from the upper class. There is something about that upper class, that upper crust, that bourgeois element of society that their good living makes them satisfied with a status quo. Consequently, they do not yearn for the upliftment of the mass. And when God's aim and purpose is revealed, it is always for the total good of the total society and not for any particular class of society. And so usually in that elitist group of aristocrats, they do not yearn for change. They do not seek advantage of lessers or for lessers. They take advantage of those who are in a lesser position. Consequently, when God chooses his messenger, he does not choose his messenger out of the ranks of the learned men, for the learned men are learned in perpetuating the society that God is angry with. He doesn't choose the religious men of the day, for the religious men have been co-opted by the powers of that society, and so the religious men really preach for that government that God is displeased with. But when God chooses a man, he goes where one would not think. He goes into the bowels of humanity. He goes to the dregs of society. He goes to the outcast, to the despised and the rejected. And he chooses a man. And he says, this is my man. He doesn't have to empty out his man of the crookedness of the world for his man has not been corrupted with the crooked philosophy of the world. So he has a straight shot at that man. So that when he raises up his man, you won't be able to take credit for it by saying, he was educated by us. He came from our college and our university. And God, uh, you know, had to choose something that we had had our hands on. God, knowing the thinking of vain, egotistical men, he says, you won't be able to claim my man. For when I choose my man, I will choose a man that all men have overlooked. <laughs> Wonderful. And so, he chooses that man, and since he is able to search out the hearts of men, the appearance of men is what knocks most of us out, if you pardon that slang expression. Our pedigree is what knocks people out. Our credentials is what knocks people out. But when God chooses a man, he has no outward credential. He has no outward fame. But inwardly, the God sees in his heart. Here is the right repository for my message. Here is a vessel that longs for the deliverance of the people. Here is a vessel that longs for the uplift of the people. Here is a vessel that loves the people and is willing to suffer. Because when God assigns a man, 
to the sacred duty of delivering a message of good for the people, he is going to be hated, he is going to be despised, he is going to be cast off, he is going to be persecuted, he is going to be cast into prison, they are going to seek his life, but if he loves the people, and if he loves the God who chooses him, he will not fear for his life, he will not be squeamish over suffering, he will not fear being set at naught, but he will take all of that just to deliver the message of God to the people. In one of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, he said, the three most hated men are these. The rich man who gives away his riches to the poor. A learned man who teaches the ignorant. And the man to whom the Holy Quran is revealed. Why should such noble men be hated? When men are rich and they give their substance to the poor, they set a dangerous precedent for the other rich who have gotten their riches by robbing and fleecing the poor and who do not like any example of such beneficence and mercy to show them up. So therefore, when there is a good and kindly rich man, he is hated by other rich men. You know, it is not an accident that it is written in the scriptures that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. Men who have riches are generally arrogant. Men who have riches are proud, are scornful of the poor, are scornful of those who have to struggle for their existence. Men who are rich do not feel the necessity of charity, sharing, guiding others into the way of success. Men who are rich like to stay in a singular class. If there are others who are rich, let it be a small group. Never let there be many. So when a good rich man comes along and he starts showing other rich men the proper way to act with riches, then he's hated by the wicked rich. What about a learned man? In this world, people make merchandise of others due to the lack of knowledge. I think it's Hosea, the prophet, who says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. When you don't know, many evil things can be done against you. So when there is a man who is learned, who wants to share learning with the people, then that man of learning, who freely gives learning, is he who is educating the ignorant to free them from the bonds of ignorance and from the bands of oppression. So any learned man who is truly learned, who wants to educate the ignorant masses, is always going to be hated by those who have kept learning from the masses. And the third man, 
the most hated of all, is that man to whom the Holy Quran is revealed. Why? This book, Holy Quran, is called a book that should be read or recited. It has many names. It is called the light. It is called the healing. It is called the discrimination. It has many wonderful names because the wisdom contained in this book is that which will heal a people whose souls are sin sick. It will heal a people who have been steeped in ignorance. And their ignorance and their sin has caused their disease, and their disease has shortened the span of their days. The wisdom of this book will lengthen their lives. The wisdom of this book will heal their disunity. The wisdom of this book will pour oil into their darkened minds and give them a new energy and a new power to accomplish new, wonderful, and magnificent things. This book, Quran, called the light, mind you, not a light, but the light. The star is a light, and the moon is another light. But the sun is the light. And when a man walks by starlight, he can make a mistake. When a man walks by moonlight, he might fall in a ditch. But when a man walks by the light of the sun, there is no chance for error. The wisdom of the Holy Quran is to be the light of the world in the head of that one to whom its treasure is revealed. Now, that man to whom the Holy Quran is revealed is a rich man. Because wisdom is the true treasure of God. Many men have dug deep into the earth and have fought and killed one another over the temporary treasures of the earth or temporal treasures. Certainly we need these treasures. But he who unlocks the treasure house of wisdom is he who has found the key to eternal power and eternal life. Are you listening? Good. He who unlocks the storehouse of wisdom, which this Quran is to be a preparatory book, to unlock the universal book of wisdom that is written above your head, beneath your feet, and around you. For the Holy Quran teaches us that in everything that Allah created, there is a lesson for man, if man would be mindful. So the true book is not written on pages. The true book is the universe itself. But these pages represent the key to unlock that book. Understand now. <laughs> so, a man who has been given the root wisdom, understanding, interpretation of the Holy Quran is a man 
All praise is due to Allah. He is a man who is rich, who gives his riches to the poor. He is the most learned of men who gives away wealth of wisdom to the unlearned. He is the representative of the beneficent God who gives asking nothing in return, who shows mercy because it is his to show mercy to those upon whom no one has shown mercy. The black man of America and the dark people of the world have not known the beneficent God. The black man of America and the dark people of the world have not known the most merciful God. We knew that he was merciful, but we did not taste his mercy. We knew that he was beneficent, but we could not say in our condition that we had shared in his beneficence. Oh, the very spiritual minded among us could look even into the darkness of slavery and say, yes, even there he showed his beneficence, even there he showed his mercy. But to the unlearned ones, it looks as though generally we have not tasted of the beneficence and the mercy of God. 400 years in America is abundant proof that the black man of America has been deprived of the jewels of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The black man of America has been deprived of the rudiments of civilized teaching. The black man of America has been deprived of the riches that every human being should have the right to possess. Wait now. Do we have the same right to wealth as Mr. Rockefeller? Pardon me for calling your name. Do we have the same right to wealth as Mr. DuPont and Mr. Ford? As the highbrow millionaires of America and the world? Yes. By what right do we claim right of the wealth of the earth? I notice if Mr. Rockefeller died tonight, or his father, if he died before him, he was put in a similar box. May have been a little more elaborate, but hell, he wasn't going no place like I did, don't go any place. He didn't walk to his final resting place. He had to be carried there. Though they might have made a fancy mausoleum or tomb, for him, and they don't even mark our little grave. I guess we all own the same plot of earth in death now. And if the earth upon which we stand germinated the seed that brought forth our life, then we are citizens, if we are, of this land then we are, should be equal sharers in the wealth of that earth that fathered or fostered or nourished the seed in the loins of our fathers that produced us. I want you to listen. So if you want to claim the oil or the coal or the gold or the wheat, or the barley or the oats, claim it for a while. But there will come a time when a just ruler 
shall be risen up for the people who will give the people their just due for poverty is not the will of God. Poverty is the way of men who are deprived of learning or who are oppressed by other men. So that man who comes with the Holy Quran, who comes with wisdom to give it to the unlearned, who comes with riches to share with the poor, this is what Jesus meant when he, in his famous Sermon on the Mount, said, Blessed are the poor. But we have never seen a poor man who is blessed. It is not blessed to come home to a shabby home with cockroaches and rats. And reverence, if you say that the poor man is blessed, I say then get poor and change places with it and see if you are blessed. Oh, please, you too, Carla. You say that the poor man is blessed, I say then get poor and change places with it and see if you are blessed. <laughs> oh, please, you too, Carla. Claim 
children right on to those under whom, uh, uh, under whose authority uh, they may be. Or we bring it home to those who are under our authority. All right to speak against America's evil, just don't speak against mine. It's all right to talk about the white man's viciousness, just don't uh, open up ours. It's all right to talk about the white man's injustice, but uh, look over the black man's injustice. It's all right to decry his evil in the councils and chambers of government. But uh, don't talk about the evil in the councils and chambers of government among the righteous or among those who say they want righteousness or even in the secret chambers of your home. <laughs> when God raises up a messenger, he raises up a standard of justice. And as the scripture says, God is no respecter of persons. It matters not to him whether you are rich or poor, whether you are white or black. Right is right. And right wrongs no one but those who are guilty. And so, to be hated today is to be loved by God. It doesn't pay to be too popular. If you're popular with the forces of evil, you can't be too good yourself. If you're popular with those whose way is corrupt, and you also are corrupt. But like David the psalmist says, don't walk in the path of the ungodly nor sit in the seat of the scornful or in the way of sinners. It is better for a man to walk alone than to be in the company of fools. And so that man who will come in the last days to show beneficence to the black man, to show mercy to the black man, he's going to be a hated man. For now the poor's turn has come to be blessed. You know, the beauty of studying the earth is that one side of the earth is in the light while another side is in darkness. But as surely as the earth turns, that side that was in the light goes into darkness and that side that was in the darkness comes again into the light. And so the Jesus of the scripture says, I am come that those who say they see might be blind. And I am come that those who are blind may see. Now, isn't that strange? We're going to get all these Jesuses straight here. So we don't always look back in a time machine. Because we want you, black man of America and the world, to know that it is not always necessary to look back for your Jesus and back for your Moses and back for your Abraham. For well, God has power to make one in those days, he got power to give you one today that you can behold as they beheld them. <laughs> so that you and I will have our chance to either reject him as they were rejected in the past or to accept him and be guided aright. I have not named this subject. I'm going to let it flow as it pleases Allah and his messenger. But let us go on. Think over this man. He comes to change things around. Seems 
which to me is quite a revolutionary figure. He's not some placid, passive, sissified looking dude who only is talking about forgiving and mercy and peace. But he's a man of supreme strength and character who knows that in a world of evil, it takes strength to put evil down. And when you meet evil men, you have to resist evil. As the Bible teaches, you resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that's not talking about no spiritual devil. It's talking about this blue-eyed white man. He is the real devil. Who has been exposed to the unlawful? 
limited understanding of the wisdom of the universe and its originator. I represent a man who is sharing that wisdom with fools like myself. I represent a man who comes speaking for the poor because he himself was born out of the poor. I represent a man who comes speaking for the unlearned because he himself was born from among the unlearned. I represent a man hated of all men because of that truth that God has put in his mouth. Yes, the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was a hated man. And the Elijah Muhammad of today is a hated man. Why do you hate Elijah Muhammad? You hate him because he guides to the path of righteousness. You hate him because he guides to the path of truth and justice. You hate him because he uncovers the white man's evil path and tells you black men walk not therein. You hate him because he has lifted up the skirt of America's garment and shows you her nakedness, her filth, and her shame. You hate him because he cannot be bought out by rich men, nor scared off by powerful men. You hate him because he is the man to whom God's arm is revealed. And since he knows the power of his God, he fears none but his God. As it is written of him, you hate him without a cause, and that is true. But nevertheless, here he comes from among the poor, sharing learning with those of us whom no one talks. Yes, white people, you speak pretty good by us. After denying us education for 300 years, you did turn around and give us your education. We appreciate it. But you know you didn't give it to us for our good. You gave it to us for your good. Because you left out the most important ingredient which Muhammad teaches us is self-knowledge. Not in your nature to teach us the knowledge of self. For if you even attempted to teach us the knowledge of ourselves, you would sit yourself down from power. Because if you ever taught the black man the knowledge of self, he would know that you have no right to rule over him. So you did your job, now God and his messenger are doing theirs. And so, my beloved black brothers and sisters, now the messenger from the beneficent God is giving out good deeds, good words, good guidance to the black man at a time when the Western world is falling apart. Don't you think it's interesting, brothers, that yesterday, when coal was the universal uh, recognized power and England dominated coal and its supplies in the world, that England became the master of the world. But when a better fuel was found than coal, which is oil, then England lost power to America because America, through corporations and monopolies, gained power over the oil reserves of the Arabs. And now that the Arabs have arisen to take back their wealth, they are now the wealthy power because the oil is theirs. And now America says, if you don't give us oil, if you are seen strangling us, we'll go to war. <laughs> dear, dear, dear. But when you strangled us, there was none to stop you. And how you delighted yourself in strangling us. But those who love to strangle don't like it when God applies his grip. You see, it is not the Arabs today. It is not the Mr. Multitum today. 
It is not Mr. Fidel Castro. It is not Mr. Manley in Jamaica. It is not Mr. Brezhnev in Russia. No, 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 no. If you were dealing with these men, maybe you could deal. But according to the Holy Quran, it says of him who is on scene today that he's Maliki Yawmadi. He's the master of the day of judgment. He can move men's minds to thinking and doing as he pleases. So now he is moving the world. Notice, white America, how even when you get together, you can't agree. Because God is confusing your heads of government. And when you're confused, you make an awful lot of mistakes. And you can't even see your mistakes while others are watching you. And so your mistakes are bringing your house to ruin because God intends to put another one in your place. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. Yes, you little knobby-headed brother of mine and sister of mine, you are the meek, you are the poor. Though your head may look naughty and your face may look ashy, your eyes are red from oppression and ignorance, poverty, squalor, and want, yet you, the despised and the rejected, are the choice of God to be put on top. And this divinely chosen messenger from the beneficent God is here to prepare you for your future, which is independence and the rulership and mastery of self and the earth beneath your feet. You say it can't be done. The book says you're wrong. The book said this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. You should rejoice, black man and woman, wherever you are. Rejoice because your day has come. Rejoice because your light has come. Rejoice because your time has come. And I beg you not to walk in the way of the ungodly enemy. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Don't mock the righteous. But come to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Bask in the light of his wisdom. Be healed by that wisdom of your spiritual and my spiritual diseases and sicknesses. Be healed of the sin of following an enemy of self. Have the discrimination put into your head so that you may know truth from falsehood, right from wrong, good from evil, that you may choose which one will be your master. And when you learn of the divine messenger of God, you will love him. He's going to be shown <coughs> here in New York. You will have a chance to see him for yourself on February the 26th, our annual Savior's Day. We're going to bring it in to New York City on closed circuit television at the 369th Armory. I'm sorry that we have to charge you to let you in, but it costs money for the closed circuit television, but it's only $3 per ticket, and I say to you, hurry, get your ticket now. I'm telling you, if I had a chance to see Moses, I would run to see him. If I had a chance to see Abraham, I would run to see him. If I had a chance to see Jesus or Prophet Muhammad, I would run to see him. But they are dead and they are gone, and I am alive. But today we have the last of them. We have the greatest of them all. I say run to see Elijah Muhammad. And when you see Muhammad, you will be looking at the very expression of the beneficent God. Thank you for listening. Call this number and get your ticket. That number is 678-5818. 678-5818. Call right now. Reserve your ticket. It's $3. There's only 20,000 tickets and you better hurry or you get left. Thank you for listening. I still want to Thank you, Minister Farrakhan. You have been listening to Muhammad Speaks to New York City. The featured speaker is the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan.
If you would like to unite with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, call this number right now, 678-5830. That's 678-5830. And also find out about your ticket to see the last messenger of Allah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, on February 26th. Thank you for listening.